Mike, firstly, who's, who's fit? Who can travel to Cardiff? Um, yeah, good question. Um, so Pat's done um, three or four sessions now. So so Pat's um, training with the group. Obviously, we've got to be um, mindful of the fact that he's had two hamstring injuries this year and um, we've got to be mindful of that in terms of, obviously, we've got two games in a short space of time or three games if you, um, if you include Saturday, the following Saturday. Um, obviously, Corey's been... Um, training kind of full contact now so Corey's back with the group um Adji played some minutes for the um under 21s the other night so Adji's been back training um Jack's still a question mark at the moment unfortunately he hasn't um we were hoping based on his history that that would that would be quicker than the prognosis but unfortunately that's not the case so um Jack's out on the grass he is running but I don't think he's gonna be available this weekend Bradley Dax. Bradley Dax available, yeah. Bradley Dax. Um, Bradley Dax been training. So to have people like Daki and Corey back in the group, I think, just in terms of their experience, is um, hugely value, valuable for for everyone. So um, yeah, they're the. I think they're the main ones. I think Rusin was the other one that we weren't sure about. Yeah. So Rusin, um, it's a real strange one. So Rusin took a contact injury against um, um, Southampton. Southampton. Um, he came in, came out and trained. I can't remember what day it was. Maybe the Tuesday afterwards, and complained of um, some issues with his calf. Um, based on the specialists, they they still think he'll be a couple of weeks. Um, so we we should see Rusin before the end of the season. But I think the reality is it will probably be the the latter end of the season, unfortunately for for Naz. And Jensen sealed. He was going to have a scan and just do what, establish whether he needed surgery or. or yeah, so it was the worst case scenario really for Jensen. So he's gonna he's gonna have to have an up. Um, so they're looking for kind of six to nine months for Jensen. Um, you know, I've never, as I said to you previously, Paul in Zeshwek, I've never experienced anything like this since my time at the football club. Um, but as I keep saying, it is what it is. You know, I, I feel for Jensen because just when he was going to get his opportunity. Um, this happens, but sometimes you know these things happen for for young footballers, and it's going to be a challenge for him. Um, he seems in a good place. He's processed what's what the the outcome is, but unfortunately for him, it's going to be a prolonged period of time out. And we were talking after the Queens Park Rangers game that this sort of fortnight is a bit like a circuit break, but a chance to reassess, to, to to recharge. I mean, how how does it feel? Does it feel like you've been sort of Having another start, having another burst for the final eight games. Yeah, um, look, I was I was really disappointed with the QPR game. I think of the five games I've taken, that was the worst in terms of performance. Um, I was really disappointed with with most aspects of that game. Um, I think it's good, you know. Obviously, we've had a number of number of the lads away on international duty, and I think a change of scenery sometimes can be good for them. Obviously, we've only had a handful back today. We've got a handful back in tomorrow, so they'll start filtering back in from from wherever they've been. Um, but the rest of the group have trained really, really well. Um, so yeah, we've um, we've had a good couple of weeks. Um, we've got you know three games in particular. The next three games where we come come up against opposition that will be really, really well organised. So we're going to have to be miles better on the ball than what we were against QPR. Um, and obviously the addition of some of the some of the guys coming back from injury, you know, pads the squad out a little bit more. You know, we we were. We were beyond thin really before the international break and obviously having them back in just on the grass in the training session just gives everyone a boost. You touched on it as well last time um, before Chris Ryan just about the position you're in at the minute and, and they have a short list and there may well be someone coming in before the end of the season. Has there been any change in that or would you, would you still see yourself now being here? Yeah, as far as I'm concerned, I mean, the, the original conversation was um, take the team to the end of the season. If we find an ideal candidate between now and then, obviously, we'll let you know. Um, I'm comfortable with whatever the outcome is. Um, obviously, my priority is what win games of football, so I'm not thinking about who the, the next head coach is with all due respect to that person. Um, we need a result, and we need we need a result really, really quickly. So the next, the next game and the next three games are going to be really important. For the for the remainder of the season, and from your point of view as well, Christian has said that um, 
the weather comes in now can bring their own staff with them. I mean, are you comfortable with that? Because obviously that could have an impact on on your role and what you do. Yeah, yeah, I have to say I'm more than comfortable with it. And that was that was the case with Mick as well. I think um, there was a conversation with Mick around bringing. Um, a member of staffing with him, but he would obviously come initially by himself. So that was always the case with Mick. It just, for whatever reason, didn't happen. So nothing changed from when I took the team last time and then Mick came in. Um, and nothing's changed this time, really, um, in terms of uh, my position at the football club. Um, and Cardiff, I mean, like we spoke about ages, you, you sort of hit, hit a team that are finding form again. I know they lost the, the derby with Swansea, but they had a very good run four or five games leading up to that so it's probably not the ideal time to be playing them yeah look really well organized um it will be similar in terms of the qpr game in terms of that you know they um they put bodies behind the ball but they they're not bodies behind the ball for body's sake you know they're um they're really well organized really well coached out of possession they're a they're a huge threat from set pieces which we spoke about with the group and we, you know work that we, we're going to have to do over the next kind of 48 hours um, but ultimately we've got to be better with the ball I think that's my biggest disappointment and sometimes the international break is a blessing but it's also a curse because you want the next game to correct the last game um, I was really disappointed with how good how poor we were with the ball so you know we've, we've spoke around you know, we're going to have to be better with the ball regardless of who we play um, so yeah look, really well coached team I think the coach has, has got the absolute maximum out of what, what he's um, had at his disposal and I think um, I think they've had a reasonably good season um, and you know they they are in form. Obviously, the last game was a derby game, um, which I mean, with all respect, derby games, I don't think you can read into them too much because there's so much passion and there's so many factors that go into those types of games. It's the pre the games prior to that that we've watched a lot of. Um, and like you said, really well organised, threat from set pieces, and they have some really really good individuals at the top end of the pitch. Um, I find it difficult to ask. A lot of people are asking me. Um, have you spoken or do you know how Tony Mowbray is and how his uh, recovery is going? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, I've spoke to Tony. Tony's back home, um, which I think is massive for, for him uh, and his family. Um, I am due to catch up with him, but I think his response was get a win first. <laughs> so um, hopefully when... Um, when when that win comes, hopefully I'll pop round and we'll grab a coffee and we'll have a catch up. So um, he wants me to concentrate on the job. As as everyone knows, I've got nothing but um, admiration and gratitude for everything that he has done for me and continues to do for me. So um, yeah, he's um, he's back home. Um, I don't know details in terms of how everything went, but he is, he's back with his family. We were due to catch up for a coffee at some point, but he wants me to concentrate on the job first. Thank you. Mike, is, is that kind of a message that you can also use with the players as well? You know, just to give them a little bit of extra motivation, you know, do it for Tony, do it for yourself, do it for you. Yeah, listen, I, I don't want to use Tony's situation as um, in the respectful way. I don't want to use it as a motivational tool, but I do think Tony's situation can um, make people realise that we're all hugely passionate about Sunderland Football Club and we're huge, hugely passionate about um, winning games of football and no, none more than myself in terms of who wants to be successful, but sometimes life happens around you. And there are sometimes a bigger, a bigger picture to, to anything that goes on in life, and it won't just be Tony situations. I'm sure we've got we've got an amazing fan base, and there'll be personal situations that they're all going through. And um, what we've got to try and do is try and put smiles on people's faces, and the easiest way to do that is clearly to win games. So we can help the Sunderland fans in terms of whatever they've got in their lives, and I'm sure we can help Tony. Um, I think Tony would prefer us to be winning games for football than worrying about him and I mean I mean that respectfully. So obviously the, the draw at QPR was important even though you say it was not particularly good at you know, performance in terms of breaking that cycle of defeats um, and the, the two week break presumably has refreshed the players and, and given them a little bit more energy and, and that's a positive thing to, to come off a draw rather than another defeat mm -hmm. going into this game. Yeah, that, that bit's not lost on me. Like, I agree with that. I think um, 
as a coach, you want the team to be representative of you. Um, and I appreciate results during kind of, what's this, my third spell now, that haven't, haven't gone as well as I would liked. But I think some of the performances or pockets of the performances have been reflective of the work that we've been doing. Um, QPR wasn't reflective of that. And I think that's my disappointment. And th listen, the, the, the guys know that. And we've had some really um, good conversations over the last couple of weeks around um, that game. So I agree in terms of, you know, a two week break can be really, really refreshing. But there's also the other side where really we want, we want the next game to try and put that game right. So um, like, I, like I said earlier, we've got to be better with the ball. Um, We've got to be better with the ball against Cardiff and Blackburn because you know they're really well organised out of possession. If we're not um, if we're not good with the ball, it could be a long afternoon. Um, obviously, being an international break, how have you been able to use that um, with the players you have? Yeah, it's it's more difficult than people think um, because obviously you've got the guys. You've got what six or seven guys away, um, and then you've got to try and get a balance with the guys that are still here. Um, and you're utilising a lot of the younger players to get that balance in terms of the work that you want to do. Um, so it's not as easy or straightforward as what people think. Um, but that'll be the same for, for kind of most clubs up and down the country, so that's not an excuse. But it's been good in terms of um, the lads that we've had left over. It's been good in terms of lots of individual stuff that we've been doing with them, whether it be clips, whether it be... Um, games that are coming up, all those types of things. So it's been good from that perspective, but it's not as straightforward as, you know, people think you've had two weeks and you've had two weeks to work with the team to really iron out all the things that have happened previously. That's not the case because, uh, you know, as I said, a lot of the lads are away on international duty, but for certain individuals, I think it's a really, it's a really important two weeks. You know, the players have been around, kind of, what is the move for them then for, for that final stretch of the season? Um, yeah, I'm always really conscious of trying to ask this question because obviously we've not we've not won since I've taken over the team. So they're not like they're not like skipping them that up and down the corridors, but the, the general uh feel around the environment is is fairly positive. And like I've said previously, I think when the players have clarity on what we're trying to do, um I think it becomes a lot easier for them to see kind of light at the end of the tunnel. I think when that clarity's gone, I think it becomes really difficult for footballers. Um, so they've been really good from that point of view. As I've said after the last game, I think the last game in particular, we need a little bit of help. And obviously getting some of those bodies back will help the group because I think we're asking maybe too much of one or two individuals at the moment in terms of where they are in their timeline. So when we get one or two bodies back, I think it will be a huge boost um, to everyone. In two games in quick succession, with obviously some injury problems you do have, is that something you're concerned about? Um, uh, no, I wouldn't say I'm concerned about it. Um, it's been no different to the previous five games. You know, <laughs> there's not a huge amount of difference. Um, the, the two games are going to be really difficult games. Um, I think Cardiff, apart from obviously the last game, are in really, really strong form. Um, Blackburn, I know um, John John's gone in at, at Blackburn, and um, I watched a lot of his games at Birmingham last season um, and I'm, I don't think he really got the credit he deserved for the job that he did at Birmingham I thought he did an unbelievable job for, for what he had at his disposal and having watched Blackburn he um, he's kind of followed a, vi a very similar kind of mantra in terms of really really well organised you can see they're really 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 well coached I know they haven't probably got the results that they deserve um, but both games are going to be very very similar in terms of we're going to have to be good with the ball if we're not good with the ball both games are going to they're going to be difficult games for us so ultimately I look at us and you know if we're if we're good with the ball hopefully the the results will be what we want them to be obviously we've got that natural breaks out of the way now kind of a straight run, run to the final stretch what are you hoping to achieve in those final eight games um, well, it's the same as when I took over five games ago. You know, we want to win every game of football. Um, we want to try and get the most out of what we've got. Um, I think we've done that in some of the games, not consistently. Um, so, yeah, you know, we'll go into every single game, regardless of injuries, regardless of people available, trying to win the game. Um, and, 
you know, I think probably Southampton was a, was an example of that. We get the game back to 2-2. And the dilemma in my head as a coach is, do you kind of make a change or do you make a tactical change? Do you make a change as a sub to maybe see out a 2-2 result? Um, obviously, I didn't do that. You know, I felt the game was in the ascendancy for us. So, we, you know, we tried to push on. We ended up losing the game 4-2 and I looked like an idiot. But that's... As I've said a thousand times, that's the role. You know what I mean? Like that's that you sit in this position. You, you're you're only one end. You're one end or the other end of the spectrum. Um, so yeah, every game we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna try our best to to be as competitive as possible. We want to win every game of football, regardless of who we put on the pitch, and that'll be the same for the final eight games. Okay. Um, Mike, are you of the mindset that three points anywhere will set the ball rolling to the end of the season? Yeah. Um, and so obviously the fans would likely want a, a response you know, after the break. It's been, as I say, a difficult period of, of late, but we did get that draw against QPR. How can you assure them that, you know, what's been going over the break will be put into action uh, this weekend? Um, well, it's very difficult to assure them. Um, but what one thing I can say is, as I said, I think the previous four games we've we've had in pockets of those games, I think we've been, I think we've been good. Uh, we haven't found the level of consistency that I would like as the head coach. Um, out of those four games, obviously the QPR one for me was the biggest disappointment we got a point from, from from my perspective. And I know that sounds bizarre. You know, the game that you you took a point from is the one that you're most disappointed with. But um, my gauge is always: Are they trying to execute what we want them to do? Um, do we look like a Sunderland team, I, I didn't feel that was the case in our kind of last outing. So, um, look, we're doing everything we can behind the scenes. I think, as I, as I've mentioned earlier, having some of the some of the guys back is a huge boost for for everyone in particular. Um, some of the some of the players that we we're asking to we we're asking them to to probably do more than what they are capable at the moment. Um, but like I keep saying, it is what it is. We've got to keep working. We can't feel sorry for ourselves. Um, we've got eight games remaining. We want to try and get maximum points from those eight games and we'll see where that takes us. Just on, on Curry Evans, of course, he's been out for, for so long, getting him back in any capacity. Obviously, he's had an incident in the 21s recently. What does he bring, not just on the field, but off it as well, I mean, in the dressing room? Uh, yeah, huge amount of experience. Um, really understands the game but when I say understands the game he understands the game at a real deep level um, and I know look Corey's still got aspirations of continuing to play and um, and rightly so you know trying to play for as long as he possibly can but I also know when he when he finishes if he does want to go that route he's going to be a really good coach um, because he thinks about the game in you know real depth and detail and he's been you know obviously we had a really good season last year we finished sixth um but even during last season, there were periods where he was hugely missed. There were periods where he was massively missed. And I think this year, um, again, um, his influence, I think, has been missed. Not not on the field, but more off the field, around the dressing room. Um, 